You get me. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Larry L. Welcome back to another video. Today, I have another one-on-one -on -one Zoom lesson to show you guys. It's a clip from a session with my boy. His name is Pierre. Uh, we went over how to make drum fills from scratch, specifically swingy drum fills from scratch, mainly for like lo-fi beats and that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Make sure you watch all the way to the end. Like, comment, subscribe if you get me. Do you have any, like, do you recommend any packs for like really like, like live drum sounds or how would you get or how do you make your drum sound like more more like real instead of like trappy you know what I mean? yeah i would just like i would look for packs that have like a more like real sound to them you know yeah, a lot yeah. of the cymatics packs have some like if I you have that. dreams there's like tons of like real drums in here like like in in this pack right here in the drum one shots there's live drums right. and these toms right here Yeah, that's cool. That's like a flam. That was like if uh, a drummer has two drumsticks hitting the snare almost at the same time, but there's like a slight delay. It's called a flam. You could start a drum fill with that. So this is what I would do. I would like just get samples that sound good together. So like it depends on what style fill you want too. Like if you want it to be like a swingy fill, I would go with like a third beat and I would go like doo -doo 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 like this maybe. Maybe there. Something along those lines, you know what I mean? You can you can just get really creative with it. I think I was just putting them too close together too. That's a swingy fill. That has like that swing vibe to it. If you were doing some lo-fi, I would do a, I would do something along those lines. If you were doing some like lo-fi stuff, you had a sample in there, you could see. It would have to have that swing to it originally though. If you had something like this, but I'd have to move it this way. Ah, it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's a delay here. You know, but I would space it out. Like I would, I wouldn't put it like that close. No, I get you. Yeah. What? Well, let's just say you want like that. Like you finish. Like that's the whole drum fill you want, right? Is there yep. a way to just make it into an audio file? Yeah. Uh, if you had them all sent to the mixer, you could throw them all into the mixer. Make sure everything's in there. Control Shift L. Name them. Um, normally, what I do too, though, is like I would space. I would get these guys, right? Let's just like loop them real quick. Let me see. This one needs to go somewhere else. Because I create these sends, and whenever I do that automatic send, it sends, it's, it, it throws the samples that I'm trying to send to the mixer, it sends them into these it's two send huh. channels right here, and I hate when it does that. So I'm like, yo, why does that have, like, so much reverb right now? So then I was going to make sure four and five, I got to, like, resend whatever tracks went to those. Yeah, so then I would make sure... I think this is the sample, so let me just move this out of the way. I would create like a drum bus right here or a drum fill bus. I think this is new, isn't it? I'm like, what is that, bro? What? <laughs> <laughs> is that from the new update? Did you? I think update? so. Yeah, I just updated finally. Oh, yes, I haven't either. I'm just like, what? Yeah. But yeah, I would uh like take all these drums, send them to this route to this track only, send them to this bus that we created. I would throw an EQ on there and then a compressor. I'll do it with the fruity limiter just to show you. And then if you wanted to, you could like with the reverb send so that way you don't have to put reverb on each individual track here you know what i mean so let's yeah. throw reverb on that whole bus i would like spread the stereo out a little bit right here too so it adds that same reverb to the whole drum fill you know kind of glues it together then uh what i would do is just like eq out some lows maybe boost a little bit of highs over here depending on what you wanted to go for that reverb sounds a little weird i'm gonna turn it down a little bit and then i'll compress that turn this threshold down so it kind of glues these drums together a little bit, makes it like somebody's playing it in the in the drum kit. If there's any drastic leveling issues, then I would I would adjust them in the faders right here, but they sound pretty close. See how that sounds like it's being played now? Yeah, I know. I'm like, that's crazy. You know? 
and then if you wanted to uh to bounce that into just like one file just if you're gonna do that make sure that you have this highlighted correctly and you're not cutting off any of the reverb like let it tail out and then i would just highlight that right there and hit alt r so you highlighted the drum bus channel not the individual channels so it's going to record everything in that bus and then you just hit start and then it should appear on the playlist right there whoops Oh, it's so cool though. Now you have it all in just one file. And if you wanted to, you could save it as a drum fill. You know, you could put it in a pack that you made. You made a drum fill pack. So now you have a nice drum fill. And then if you wanted to save it, just make sure that you put like the tempo on there. We, we got the tempo that's 120. So that way it'll match into a 120 tempo no matter what. So then if you wanted to keep the vibe going too. But when you do drum fills, make sure that when they resolve, drum fills always sound best when they have like like a kick and a crash on the one, on the downbeat, they call it. So like, like if you were making a drum pattern, to resolve it, I would have like a kick and a crash. Does that kind of like apply for open hi-hats? Because I've noticed that they're better like when they like land on a... Uh, sometimes. I mean, depends, really. I, I like open hi-hats in the middle of drum loops. I'll show you in a second, too. Like, so, like, that, it's going to sound great. This kick sounds... That's the thing with live, like, drums. They don't sound as beefy. But you could always layer them up, like, to get that real sound. Right. Like, if you have that real kick, it has that real vibe to it. And then if you wanted to, you could always layer some, like, processed kick on top of it. See how, much, how like natural it sounds now? Like you got a crash coming in after that drum fill. It just resolves it. It sounds so clean, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you the other 